You're listening to Best Forevers, a podcast for kindred spirits, a podcast that encourages you to love more on your friends and to further consider the issues that plague friendships. I'm Elisa Lucas, and I'm excited for my first remix episode, which means I have returning guests. Hi, Marky and Autumn. Hi, we're back. And better than ever, honestly. <laughs> Oh my god. You thought you missed us, and here we are. (laughs) You thought you'd never know where the story went, but... (laughs) Yeah, that's the thing. I brought Marky and Autumn back because when they were in here at my in here, at my house recording last time, they were getting ready for Autumn's graduation and moving across country, and now I'm looking at both of them in the same room however many months later. That was in April... And here we are, almost a year. Well, nine months. Nine yeah, months. a Math. whole pregnancy. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say academic year. But, you know, not just those nine are months. the two things that are nine months long. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to bring them back because I think that's a really interesting follow up to see like how you dealt with all of the change. And so as a reminder, Marky and Autumn were on home base, which is the episode. So if you're listening now and you're like, I don't remember these two, (laughs) I mean, how could you forget? But also feel free to re-listen and then do your homework, do your homework, and then you can come back and listen to this episode. And I just thought it'd be great to talk about that. And so when they were on before, they were telling us about, oh gosh, a lot of things. A lot of things. Your love of the view. I love the view. Your 21st birthday coming up. Yeah, and now it's been nine months of being 21. <laughs> wow. What a time. A what story a t- in itself. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then also, like, all the roasting you did to each other, and then you fought about some kid and his pizza slices <laughs> yeah. for, like, oh half the gosh. episode. <laughs> yeah. Bringing up old feelings. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. We I'm can not- hash it all out here today. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready to return to that. <laughs> Okay, so where should we start? Should we start with, like, you tell us, like, what happened after the podcast? Yeah, so after the podcast, Autumn graduated and left me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Enough said. No. <laughs> no. Episode I'm, over. <laughs> Autumn graduated and pursued an important opportunity in grad school yeah. in Colorado, which at an unnamed institution, <laughs> we'll say. I don't know. No, I went to Colorado State and had some really great experiences and some not so great. (laughs) Yeah, and now she's back. Um, But there's a lot in between that. Yeah, Yeah, I I feel like that's like like there's more. We're jumping. We're jumping to the important like why we're here together now because I no longer am there. But let's we should we should start with the view. Yeah, because that happened. So a week after, two weeks after the last episode, we flew out to New York as a part of my birthday gift from a number of friends. Um, Stayed with Autumn's friend, Maggie. Shout out to her. She was so great. Um, And went to The View. And this experience was, it was beautiful, honestly, you might (laughs) say. Did you say beautiful? Beautiful. Oh, my God. (laughs) Um, not only did we just get to see it live and get it recorded or get to see the recording live, but, um, my favorite co-host that we had been tweeting, um, that Best Forevers had been tweeting, um, recognized me from Twitter and came up to me during a commercial break. I almost passed out. (laughs) Um, she was so sweet. Shout out to Sarah Haynes. She's no longer with The View, but we don't have to talk about it. Um, (laughs) He's still in mourning. I am in mourning. It's been like nine months um a whole pregnancy a whole pregnancy um and she is pregnant now anyway oh um, (laughs) still a fan um and she hugged me and was so nice gave me advice and you know i I don't from my seat i I watched it happen because i mean she came up and she like called him over and and i i'm just watching this happen i'm like tearing up and though me and the person next to me i'm like that's my best friend and this is his hero because i was just like I can't believe this is happening. Like, yeah. I, I don't even remember. I was just... It happens so fast yeah. when those things happen. I when couldn't, you do get yeah. to talk to someone that you respect and admire, and then you're like, did I say anything <laughs> stupid? Right. Did I stop breathing? <laughs> and the good thing was, like, sometimes when you meet your heroes, they're not who you think. Yeah, and, like, that's for she sure. She was so 
sweet and kind and yeah. down to earth mm-hmm. and exactly who I thought she was. And that's the best feeling because, you know, that is disappointing when they say, like, don't meet your heroes yeah. because they mm-hmm. aren't going to be what you expect. And yeah. when I met Joey McIntyre from New Kids on the Block, who I'm not sure if y'all know who they are. I know New Kids on the Block. Okay. Yeah. Just checking. Yeah, <laughs> uh, when I met him, I was just like, oh my God, I almost started crying. And I'm, I'm like in my late 30s at the time. And I'm like, just like, oh my God. He just grabbed my phone and he was like, click. And then did the selfie so fast, like, and was really nice. And he's like, oh, well, hopefully you'll still be our fan for the next, you Aww. know, 10 or 20 oh, years. Yeah, like, he was just really nice, but he was also a professional. Like, he was just like, click, click, and he was like, in, off you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he went to The View, and so that must have been um, a great friendship experience. Also, knowing that Autumn would soon be graduating, and so then that was, like, sort of a big... It was, like, the last... ooh I mean, what you yeah. It kind of was, like, I mean, and it was so fun. One, I learned that Mark... Well, I guess, like, we had kind of talked about it. We learned that Marky was very afraid of flying, and because of the tickets we got, we didn't get to pick our seats, so on the way there, we were not sitting next to each other. Oh, gosh. Other. And I just look over at Marky as we're taking off, and he's, like, white-knuckle clutching the seat in front of him. <laughs> I'm and from, I'm like, village. I'm like, oh, no... <laughs> But we got there. We had a really good time. Like, the view was amazing, and we spent, like, this an hour in a coffee shop after with Marky just, like, coming down from that experience. (laughs) And he just, it was so funny. We just, like, had to bring him down. And then we had... I needed an hour to post on social media about it. (laughs) That was really what we were doing. That really is true. (laughs) But then it was, it was so fun. Like, I don't try to think. We walked around in Central Park. We got, like, to the, I feel like, the depths, the middle of, like, as far as you can go in. And we realized we were so hungry. <laughs> and then it took us, like, forever to find our way out. But we just had so much fun. We went out because, you know, he had just turned 21, which was fun, too. Yeah, it was fun. Um, drinks are really expensive in New York, <laughs> yeah. is what I learned uh, from this Spoiler trip. Spoiler alert. And, like, Marky didn't know, like, really know what to order at that point. I so still like, don't. Vodka cranberry. And then he was well, like, that was my Vodka cranberry? Uh, now $12? I'm, I'm like married to vodka Sprite now. Vodka People you like drink vodka Sprite? Water now. I do. I do love a vodka water. You're staying hydrated <laughs> while you're indulging. Which is important. Name a better drink. I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it, well, I guess it's not Sprite, so that makes it a whole lot better. <laughs> I think vodka okay. Sprite is disgusting. But. Yeah. Okay, well, we can hash that out later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we had so much fun. And then... After that, it was boom, 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 and graduation. Yeah. yeah. Like, time really goes by fast at the end of the semester. So did you have time together during graduation? Like, how did that work? Yeah. So I uh, I mean, my, like, immediate family is pretty small, so I had two extra tickets, and Marky mm-hmm. was... I mean, and I think I would always talked about it. Like, Marky was coming to my graduation. Yay. It just, like, made a lot of sense. And it worked out perfectly. Just, like, yeah. the way you just get, sh- you know, shuffled in. Like, yeah. the way we sit down and... You know, we had no able way to coordinate where we were sitting. Yeah. I'm sitting at the end of a row, and to my left, I just, like, look up the leaders, and I can see Marky. Oh. Uh, and so that was really fun. And, like, I mean, graduation's long. Mm-hmm. <laughs> long I've been to them, yeah. So I was sitting there, you know, <laughs> sending updates, like, yeah. texting, like, giving each other looks. Um <laughs> But, I mean, it was fun because, like, we went to breakfast with my family and then had graduation, took pictures after, you know. Yeah. And then we had our, like, it was, like, my combined graduation and birthday party because my birthday was, like, right after graduation. Gotcha, yeah. Um, and it was, was I don't fun. know, it was super fun. Yeah. I mean, that graduation was much longer than my 20-minute graduation in college, <laughs> but. How many people were in your graduating class? Twelve. <laughs> oh, I always say 11. Oh, you did graduate. I'm, with I'm one people. of the 12. Okay, yeah. I thought I was He's the 12th. Up. He, mm-hmm. he like, also okay. graduated. I was actually yeah. number three. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to leave that off your resume. Yeah. <laughs> Third in my class. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah, and then, well, then Marky got right into orientation right away. Mm-hmm. And, like, we saw each other a little. I'm yeah. an orientation mentor. That's the background at, for oh, that. Right. At Central at, Michigan University, yep. yeah. Correct. <laughs> Oh, well, and also he has a new position with orientation, but we can talk about that later. Yes, yes, I which do. Which we're very proud of him for. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we didn't see each other. Very much. And then it was time for me to go to camp, and which mm-hmm. was essentially like... And you do camp every summer, Yeah, correct? I have. I think this summer was my last summer, but, you know, 
What can you do? But, yeah. yeah, so it was, like, very, like, The View really was kind of our last, like, really big thing that we got to do together. Because even graduation was... There's a lot going on. And yeah, and I think we're, we both really value quality time. And I think that was, like, our last big time to have that. Because yeah. even graduation day, I mean, there was obviously a lot of other things mm-hmm. going on. Yeah. How much did you cry during graduation, Marky? I didn't cry at graduation. No, I don't cry in public very much. So. Oh. But it was oh. emotional. I was like, oh, she did it. <laughs> yeah. I was like more excited, I think. Yeah. Because then I'm like, oh, I could probably get to graduation sometime. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Did you cry at graduation, Autumn? I don't think so. I don't think. I'm not like just like searching for criers. I don't know. Why didn't you I've, cry? The, at least. <laughs> me the tears i think were once i was in colorado gotcha it's like because we're we've done summers me of me at camp apart before yeah and it was like similar to that yeah right it's not a lot of communication while she's at camp because and, she's busy and i'm busy and yeah and it just like doesn't happen and we saw each other once in the summer and that was at like a this huge party thing that happens in my like neighborhood so mm-hmm. even then it was again not very much quality time and so then i moved yeah. And mm. so I think that that's when I had the tears of just like, oh, like we really aren't seeing each other. Mm-hmm. Um, Can I tell you that my first big move was to graduate school at Penn State. I was 25, but I lived in Michigan my whole life. I went to Michigan State for both my undergrad and my master's. And so my parents helped me move out to State College and helped me into my apartment and doing the things that, like, parents do for undergrads. Let's get you toilet paper and paper towel and have all these things that you need. And so they were there for a few days, and then they were leaving first thing in the morning, and they woke me up and were were leaving. So I went to hug them goodbye. When they left, I just started bawling. (laughs) And I'm, like, 25. I'm, like, children probably have this experience when they leave home for the first time when they're 18 and in this case it was with my family but there's also that feeling of you know I don't know anyone here my best friend is in Michigan my family is in Michigan I'm going into this whole situation blind and I have no idea what it's going to be like and so I can really relate to sort of what your experience was now my I lived eight hours away so Penn State's eight hours away how long how far away is Colorado 18 hour drive oh Jesus (laughs) yeah eight hours can be at least done in a day (laughs) yeah well and then even with 18 hour drive and then once I like figured out I would like take the shuttle to the airport and stuff and it was like to get to Mount Pleasant that's like a six hour trip even when you're flying just with like getting to the airport and both places so it was far. I mean... 18 hours. Yeah, it's not... Not even, like... Glad I never drove to visit because I could not be in a car for 18 hours. No. Yeah. So, can I ask, what was it like the first week? And I'll ask you first, Autumn, and then I'll go to you, Marky. Like, what was it like that first week in Colorado? You said that's when the tears came, but how did you sort of navigate that week knowing that you were that far away from your best friend. Yeah, so I think one thing that I was lucky is my roommate was someone from CMU as oh. well. Um, and we kn- we know each other pretty well from doing SAPO, which is an advocacy group for yep. survivors of sexual, sexual aggression. aggression and peer advocates, which Brooke was on talking oh, about domestic right. violence. So you can check out that episode with Brooke. Yeah. yeah, so that was at least nice. I would even say like that roommate and I became good friends, but at the time we were yeah we were friends, but uh, so that. That first week was, I mean, it was art. It was hard. Um, I also walked into my cohort, and they're all really great people. But they all had done their undergrad at Colorado State too, so oh. they knew they knew people. They had their people, so like yeah. I really felt I didn't know. Like I didn't have anyone who was like to really process through everything that was going through my, yeah. my mind in that day to day. And I mean, we texted like all the time, yeah. um, especially a lot in that week because I was it was really really hard and I think we probably like I know we FaceTimed and like talked but it just like wasn't the same yeah especially just because so much like one we talked a lot and I think that's a huge like part of our relationship and we yeah. talked about that last time but also like so much of our time together is just like being in the same room and being yeah. on our phones or like yeah. listening to music or doing work together and like we could not do that yeah and I think that was really really hard and like, something that I really like wanted and needed at that point but like I just couldn't have it yeah just because I don't know Marky like knows like every single thing like yeah. going through my head every thought and every <laughs> feeling and it's a lot harder to do that when you can't be in the same physical space yeah how was it for you Marky 
So her first week there, I wasn't back at CMU yet. Yeah. I don't think. Um, but I guess it wasn't, it didn't hit me until I went back to CMU mm-hmm. and, and she wasn't there. Like she wasn't starting a new semester with me like usual and, and not only her, but other close friends as well. So it all kind of hit me at once. Yeah. So as far as her first week back there, I felt it was hard for me to not be able to like relate to her, I guess. Like I know her problems in the past, like a lot of it would revolve around like stuff that's going on here, CMU and things like that. Things that I understand because I also go here and because I don't understand how her new university functioned and everything that was going on, like, because I couldn't get every detail because we're so far away. Um, It was really hard to like help kind of assist with that and kind of help um, provide emotional support. But as far as, like, my end, like, I had a really hard time, I think, like, the entire semester just realizing that, okay, like, it's me. And, like, I fortunately developed some really cool friendships last semester when I kind of had to find new friends and new friend groups to be a part of. But, I mean, I was, like, missing my person, Mm -hmm. and that was hard. And that was was the first time, like, since I came to college that... yeah. I didn't have her there. So, mm. I mean, it was tough. But, you know, I think it made us stronger in the end. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What are some of the things that you said you texted a lot or FaceTime? Are there any other things that you did that might have been different or unique or special over the semester that you were apart from each other to sort of maintain your friendship? Yeah. So she had, like, a late class, and she'd have to walk in the dark at night to get back mm-hmm. to her apartment. Oh, so geez. typically, she would call me during that time, and yeah. until it worked out, like, that was just, like, that was our time. Like, that's when we yeah. call each other during the week, if not anymore. But I also knew she was really busy, so for the first, like, couple months, I was like, I don't want to bother her outside of that time, like, with, like, a FaceTime or something like that, and, like, I think that changed later on. But... Yeah, like FaceTiming, texting. I don't know. That's kind of all you can do yeah. really in those yeah. situations. <laughs> yeah, I think the first, it's so interesting because like it's not that my, I had, I had places to go, but like I actually felt like I had a lot of free time in my, like look when you looked at my yeah. calendar, I had a lot of free time, but that first couple months of grad school and just like trying to take on yeah. the reading load and workload was yeah. so that was what my time was filled up with. So, and that was really tough to, I think almost not to have time to like process like how much I was missing people and needing that. But I think the Monday night, like it was Monday nights after my class and it would always be, I'll call you once I get off the bus and I had to walk like 15 minutes to my apartment. Yeah. And then when I, once I would get home and get settled, we would switch to FaceTime. Gotcha. Um, Which for, uh, we were just talking about, it worked so well for us because Marky is a night owl, and I, like, midnight is, like, a pretty late night. Like, that's, like, (laughs) I'm tired. I need to go to bed now. And I'm starting my day. (laughs) (laughs) For real. It's your time to shine at night. (laughs) When we were, even when we were roommates, I would wake up to Snapchats from him from, like, 3 to 4 in the morning, (laughs) doing his homework, cleaning, you know, who knows. (laughs) But the two, so the two-hour time difference of me being two hours behind him actually was, like, a perfect offset yeah. of our difference. That can be really difficult to manage. Yeah, you know, yeah. one of my uh, best friends, Tara, is in Nevada and it's three hours behind. And it's like, okay, so if I want to talk to her at one, that is t- okay. <laughs> and sometimes it just doesn't work, or it's like, okay, I'm going to have to talk to her later. It'll be later for me and not so much yeah. for her. And that can be really difficult to manage. So it sounds like it worked out well with the night owl versus the. And even in the morning, too, like, I'm waking yeah. up at 10 unless I have a class. And, and so and she's I, waking up at 8. And so like, <laughs> it's like 6 a.m. to him, so I, like, text him first thing in the morning, and I don't get a text back for, like, six hours or something. Yeah, and she, like, I worked really early hours, too, but I don't like to communicate in the morning because I'm really grumpy. So, like, by the time she actually got up at 8 and I've been up for a couple hours because of the time difference, like, I'm not as grumpy anymore. I probably had my coffee, so, She yeah. gets your best self, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> well, do I remember correctly... And if not, I mean, we might have to cut it out because it'll get super awkward. But I feel like I remember seeing on Twitter during the first week of school that you sent Marky money through... Uh, I don't even know how it works. I'm I'm a PayPal gal. (laughs) Yeah. A pay gal. <laughs> yeah, so tell us a little bit about... So I'm right, right? Like, yeah. Okay, okay. That's That stuck out to me because I was like, oh, that's a really cool friendship thing. So yeah. tell us. Tell us everything. Yeah, I mean, 
my love language is money. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um, she she did this more than once with like send me money for coffee and just be like, you know, treat yourself. Yeah. But, I can't believe you just said that. He I hates know. the word T R E A T. Treat. And, oh, I hate it. <laughs> it's like my oh, word. Oh, you spelled it because it's yeah. so like so how she other was more respectful like, to me than I was to myself. So like people don't like moist. Right. You don't like T R E A T. Right. Okay. It's so gross. <laughs> I'm so, I was so surprised you just said I, that. I know. I was like, I had to he say it for the... A, he made a face. For the yeah. aesthetic of it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, like, no, I usually will say, like, gift yourself. The gift yourself. Because I know he hates that. Rice crispy squares. Like, we don't use the T word. We do not. <laughs> oh, my God. Can we just side note here for a second? Is there a reason for that? Or is it just your word? It's just the sound of it. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure if no there's like story. a story because <laughs> if there was, I'm like, yes, we want we want to know it. <laughs> also, okay, there's a little bit of beef with the word because people will come in and be like, I have a really special T R E A T for you today, and it's like not food, and you're like, well, I was expecting brownies, but thanks for the guest speaker I got. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> you're like, I was hoping for brownies, but not learning. <laughs> So I was highly disappointed. <laughs> so what you're saying is that when people use T-R-E-A-T, it's usually a negative violation, not a positive violation right. to your expectations. Exactly. And it, it sounds horrible. <laughs> All Everything about the word is wrong and should be abolished. Wow. <laughs> Strong stances. I feel today. like go big, go big every go message in which I have with Marky from now on, and I am both his advisor and the internship coordinator, <laughs> is going to include the word T-R-E-A-T in some way. Reading your reflection I'm, has been a real T-R-E-A-T. <laughs> I'm changing my major. <laughs> you graduate. When? Soon, in December. December. I'm like done, almost done with the major, but yeah. <laughs> if this is how it's going to be... <laughs> I actually have a picture of Marky signing the major. Oh, you do? You're the last one to do it by paper. Right. Now we can do it electronically. So I think if you allow it, I might have to post that on Twitter as like a encourage people to sign the com major. I agree. I would yeah. love to be an advertisement. <laughs> oh my God. Not that It'll I love It'll be such fame. a treat to have you. Never mind. <laughs> Okay, sorry. I'll stop. <laughs> but no, so the first time, so back to the Back to story. the story. So the first time she sent it to you was a complete surprise. Mm -hmm. Well, all of them were surprises. I never expected it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like that first time, like mm -hmm. I wouldn't even think about sending someone and be like, oh, have this, go gift yourself. I'll adopt that for today yes. like a go gift yourself like you know i wouldn't i thought that was like a really maybe it's more common for you youngins but it seemed like just a, a nice way to say i'm thinking of you i know what yeah. you appreciate coffee that you're gonna need it on the first day of yeah. school and you know i'm thinking of you and i think something as small as sending what how much do you, your coffee like five dollars yeah. yeah i mean who knows coffee can get out of control <laughs> yeah do it with the whips and the what what have you's and the shots and the the pumps and the pumps and the, all the stuff wow you know my order <laughs> i follow you around uh, yeah. i do not uh <laughs> you nobody got time for that <laughs> he's busy yeah, and me all over the place yeah good here. luck yeah, yeah. Well, so I just think that, um, you know, it's a really easy way to say, like, you're my friend and I'm thinking of you. And so that's cool. I Take like notes, it. people. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was it was one of those things where, like, well, okay, so they're like, we don't really, like, hug anyway. So that wouldn't, wasn't something we really, like, lost. Yeah. But even just, I think, the little things that you can do when you're together mm -hmm. to be, like, that say, I love you and you're my best friend and I yeah. care about you, just we're gone. Or, like... The, you know, I can just text you and say, like, what are you doing? Like, that's the... Like, so I think in those moments of just, like, wow, I wish Marky was here. Like, yeah. I wish in this moment I could say, like, let's go get coffee together before yeah. we go to our classes. Yeah. Um, or but, I, I got your coffee today or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, we I could, we couldn't do that. And I... So I wanted... Because it, it did, definitely didn't feel like... It wasn't like, oh, this is a nice thing I want to do for Marky. You know, which I am happy to do nice things for Marky. But it was more <laughs> just, like... 
I wish Marky was here and I want him to know that I'm thinking about him yeah. and hope he remembers that he's still my best friend. And I don't know. I always needed to preface like, cause I would talk about like missing Marky in front of my roommate and my roommate was such a, like we became really close, but yeah. it was still, it's just what it wasn't quite, it the wasn't same. my person. It was, yeah, it's, it's not, not the Marky. Same. No offense roommate. No. I'm sure you have your own person. <laughs> <laughs> He does. He does. <laughs> and it was just like such a, such a hard time. Colorado has really great things. And I also met some really cool people, but it was also a really, really tough experience. And so I think it was nice to prove to myself that I can do hard things on my own. Yeah. And even, even like that I can do it without this person. I'm so used to being there. Yeah. Um, and wow, I really wish Marky had been able to be there and yeah. like be able to have him. To, to be that. a part of it though, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that I was thinking of was that, you know, you're talking about how it's like a difficult time. And so you're doing these things to to sort of make up for the things that you can't do. Like what I remember from your first episode. I say first as if there's going to be more. Maybe there will be. Ooh, sneak peek. Ooh, <laughs> teaser. <laughs> I don't know what it would be about. The continuation. When Marky I can talk all day. <laughs> We'll come up with some other topics. We'll brainstorm. We'll workshop it. But one of the things I remember from that is that you would just stand around the island or whatever in mm. your your house or your apartment and just talk. And so you have the phone, but it's like you can't do that thing. And so yeah. it you are, were forced to figure out a way to do your friendship that you weren't used to, right? Mm -hmm. Were there other things that you did? You went to go visit her? No, I... You never were out in Colorado? No, because she wasn't there long enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would have. <laughs> yeah, that probably would have been ended up... I don't know. I, I We had actually talked about... I was like, you should come for spring break. Gotcha. Just because, like... If, I was like, if you don't have any other plans, like, come stay with me. Mm -hmm. You have a place to stay. I was supposed to help move her out, but I had a work obligation when she was moving. Yeah. Gotcha. So, yeah. yeah. So then, when did things change? Another change, right? You changed... Yeah. By not being in each other's lives as, as you were before, right? Yeah. You're in Colorado, Marquis in Michigan. When did things start to change? Yeah. So I'll give like my little tiny sneak peek and then I think you could start from your end. Um, so I was experiencing a lot. The department I was a part of at CSU, um, my, my cohort and the, uh, the handful of professors that I was directly involved with in classes were really awesome. Um, but our de I walked into a department that was falling apart and oh, still yeah. currently is. Uh, in having some really serious like gross power dynamics and yeah. as a teaching assistant um as by the department wasn't treated very well and I was advised to possibly think about for the next fall is there somewhere else that I might want to go gotcha. um so I was kind of going through that and just thinking about it I was in that process starting maybe like October was like thinking really seriously about like am I going to transfer to a different institution yeah. and Marky's getting all of these updates of like this is my life yeah you know this is what's happening and then, I don't know, this... Yeah, so I work in the Leadership Institute at CMU, which is um, a really awesome department that puts on yeah. leadership programming um, for students on campus. I know you had Ellen on in a previous yes, um, episode, on, yeah. and um, so she works there as well. She's one of my supervisors, one of the many, um, <laughs> one of the many greats. Um, but yeah, so I had worked there about a year, and we had a graduate assistant opening because one of ours had just left to pursue, like, a really cool new job. Mm -hmm. And I was just telling on him on the phone, like, very casually, because I tell her about my day, yeah, we interviewed a couple of people. They didn't fill the position, so it's still open. <laughs> and it really wasn't, like, there, were, there was no intention behind that other than this is a debrief you're just of my day. About, yeah. yeah, you're just talking about I'm just about going that. on about work. Then Autumn got some ideas from that. Yeah, which is so funny because I think my initial comment was, like, oh, so it's still open? Like, <laughs> what if I applied? And we kind of, like, laughed about it. And then, like, I, like, really, like, took a pause and I was like, well, actually, like, I mean, maybe if are they still accepting applications? And so I reached out to a couple people. I also had to reach out to the the program I'm in now, um, the like, like my academic program yeah. to see like, is this even like I was like we're not gonna jump in? Just like are they even accepting applications? Yeah. And luckily, I mean, I have a lot of connections at CMU with the Leadership Institute and with. Um, the public administration program because that was what my undergrad was in and received very enthusiastic like yes but you got to get in quick if yeah. that's something you're interested in and it was kind of then from there just this like whirlwind 
panicked, like, <laughs> filling out applications. Also, just, like, is this feasible, like, financially? Am I yeah. going to be able to move back? And yeah. it just, in the weirdest way, just, like, fell into place perfectly. Wow. Like, the timing, the fact that this position didn't get filled, and they had interviewed people, and the yeah. position didn't get filled, that it was open when it was, that, and with the benefits that come with the, the, the assistantship I have, like, it, it comes with free on-campus housing. So, yeah. like... All of these things just kind of started working out. I had, you know, got invited to do a phone interview. That went well. And then, you know, they sent me... I was planning on coming to visit um, Mount Pleasant right before, like, the fall break Thanksgiving holiday. And so I get a follow-up email from them, like, hey, we'd love to set up a FaceTime or Skype interview with on this Thursday or Friday. And funny enough, it's when I'm coming to visit CMU. <laughs> so I was like, well, actually, you know, if you want, I can just come in person. And so, I don't know. I think we were both experiencing, like, a lot of just, like, what is happening? Like, <laughs> well, it was it was difficult on my end because I worked there. <laughs> so for me, I was trying to stay out of it kind of from the work end because yeah. I didn't want to be, like, mad at my department if she didn't get hired. But yeah. I, also, I didn't really want to be a part of her interview process yeah. either because yeah. for a few reasons – um, the conflict of interest. Yeah. If she didn't get the position, I didn't want she, her to be mad at me if I was on some <laughs> interview committee. So I really like tried to stay out of it yeah. from, that's probably best. from the work <laughs> yeah. end and just try. I had to separate like, okay, my department's searching for this person and then my best friend's applying for a job and it just happens to be the exact same thing. <laughs> and I was kind of caught in the middle and it was, it was, it You're was right. an experience. You're yeah. living real life. Those yeah. things happen. Yeah. <laughs> and it true. was, uh, it was a tough decision for a lot of reasons too. And I think we were also balancing, like I was balancing internally, like coming back. And I know Mark, he was even saying this, like, obviously, like, obviously I want you to come back. And I think something that was important to me is he just constantly would be like, at the end of the day, like, no matter what, I want you to be, make sure that you're making the best choice for you. Yes, of course. I hope that you're here (laughs) and that we're working together. But at the same time, like if coming back to CMU is not the right choice for you, then you should, that's not Mm, what you should. Good friend. Well, we'd already done a a semester apart. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I was used to it at that point. But. Yeah, and, and that was in November. And so, I don't know, that weekend was kind of... It was a whirlwind. We were reunited, she did an interview, <laughs> we hung out, and then she went back. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then the waiting game. The waiting period. Oh, of, did and she then, get hired? Did she? And I... Remember I wouldn't hear anything. When you thought I didn't get hired? There was like a time where I thought she didn't get hired. <laughs> I was going through a lot, but I still had to go to work every day <laughs> and act like everything was normal and fine. And it was interesting. But then I got hired. Yay! And I accepted the opportunity. And and then, it, I don't know, I think after that, it was just kind of this like... Okay, now we get to see each other soon. So in my, the last like month of my semester is also now planning to move and finishing yeah. papers and trying to finish off well. So I feel like during that, because I remember I was, I, I think I even tweeted like, just so everyone knows, like it might be hard for me to get back to you. Yeah. But Mark and I still talked on the phone. Like yeah. that was still, I think, an important thing, even not just because of like, we needed that, I needed that during that time, just <laughs> yeah. the break. Yeah catch my breath and like there's even as an introvert I think Marky's someone I feel like I can 99% of the time still talk to you and make time for and have the energy for yeah Mm -hmm. she has energy for you and she's back what were your thoughts when you heard that she got the job I was really excited I think honestly it's one of those things where it wasn't real until recently when it actually started happening so (laughs) I like knew she was coming but like it was that time of the year, too, where I'm like, I have so much going on. Yeah. I'm finishing exams. Oh, yeah. I'm finishing projects. Yeah. Um, I have break coming up. So yeah. it wasn't really until she really told we were, like, moving her in <laughs> last week where I was like, oh, crap. Oh, like, you're, like, right here. I can yeah. touch this is you. Happening. Yeah. Like, you're here where you go to the same university again. Yeah. We work in the same department. <laughs> Yeah, I think what's how is that allowed? <laughs> I know. Right. How did you right. go from <laughs> being? Yeah. You went from being best friends to graduating and going to graduate school to coming back and being friends and coworkers. Yeah, it's been interesting because I've been getting a lot of really sweet comments from people in the office who have been like, "Mark, he missed you so much." I'm uh. like, "Oh, he did." <laughs> And they're like, no, I'm sure he's so happy to have you back. Like, yeah. I know he had a really hard time without you. Mm. And then we, I keep joking around with, because, I mean, now people are seeing, like, our, us in action at together work. at work. What is that like? I think we need to chill. 
I think we're so they're right, gonna get sick of it real quick. Right now, everybody's <laughs> laughing. <laughs> a lot but of the I laughing. Think they're, they're in the honeymoon stage of what it's like to be around us a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like it's cute now, but <laughs> I think we're gonna have to try harder to do. Be at work and then not be at work. Do you think also that you say, like, in the office, they're in a honeymoon phase, but maybe you're also, the two of you are back in a yeah. honeymoon phase of being back together, yeah. and that's really exciting, and you're just like, oh, there you are, oh, just right over there, oh, oh in the same meetings, yeah. okay. Yeah. The yeah. roasts have already begun, though, I would that's say. True. Oh, what, do we have any new um, debates going on? Because that seemed to be a large Ooh. portion of the last episode where you fought over things, like the kid with the pizza. How many slices? New Ten. debates? <laughs> oh. Oh. I don't know. I mean, I, I make a lot of jokes, like, get out of my school, I keep saying. <laughs> Yeah, he was like, get out of my school. He also made this joke for a while, once I got hired, that he would be like, Auto, why won't you come to work? <laughs> He's like, we hired the new GA, and she just won't show up to work. Or just like... Before like, she moved back. Or even just this past, like... We can, I just suppose, like him, Marky being like, Oh, I hate the new GA. <laughs> <laughs> and that's you. Oh, or oh, the roasting he, is starting. What he does, this is, I think, very continuous, is I'll walk in, I'll be like, Hi, Marky, you're in. Mean, he's like, Who are you? Great to meet you. And we've like shaken hands and introduced Are you the new our, GA? <laughs> oh, great to meet you. Hi, I'm Autumn. Great to meet you. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> you know what you should do next time he does that? Say, It is an absolute treat. treat. <laughs> To meet you, sir. To meet you. What's your name again? Don't make, don't make me quit my job. <laughs> I love it there. Get out of my department. <laughs> so what are some of the things that you think that you either learned about yourself or about your friendship from being apart in the time that you were apart? So when you were in Colorado and you were back here in Michigan, was there anything that was confirmed for you, any new discoveries, anything that you figured out about yourself? So I like to think I'm a very independent person, um, Miss Independent Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> and I think I realized once not only Autumn left, but like really all my close friends left that I lean on them more than I thought. Because mm-hmm. at first I'm like, I'm good. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing great. I, yeah. I love being here alone. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think the importance of a support system has really like shown up from like not having like what I'm used to. Yeah. Um, and like I mentioned, I've like made some awesome great friendships as yeah. well while she was in Colorado, which really has gotten me through a lot. But uh, I think just learning that it's okay to have a support system and it's okay to need to lean on people from time to time. Mm -hmm. When in the past, I'd always thought, oh, I'm very independent. And I am, but I didn't realize how much I also needed, like, the support of my my friends, so. Right, and I think what's (laughs) interesting is I, Mark, he is, he is very independent, so I think often it's hard for him to, like, ask for the support he needs. But in the past, because we see each other, like, that I can I can tell when Marky's stressed and he's not talking about it, so I can be like, no, like, what's going on? Why are you so stressed? Versus, like, that was harder to do when yeah. we were to, apart. I, there was one time when you were putting together that chair. I was at a breaking point. Thank goodness you... Oh, like an Ikea chair? Like, what are we doing? Oh, this... That, ch- <laughs> This chair, like, he couldn't get it put together. He couldn't find a place in his room that it fit. And luckily, and and this is the kind of thing I would have been able to catch, I feel like, so much earlier if we had been together. But he's Snapchatting me, and he's crying that I'm he bawling. can't find a spot for his thing. And I, sometimes I have to be like, Mark, you're stressed. And he has to be like, what? I drunk bought this chair online. <laughs> it came... My awesome roommate graciously put it together for me because I was pouting on how I didn't know how to put it together. <laughs> then I, what, you know how like you hold stress in and then it finally gets to you over something yeah. so small? Yeah. I was stressed about not being able to fit this chair in my room and finding a good place for it. And I'm just sitting on this brand new chair bawling in the <laughs> middle of my room because I, all this stress caught up to me at once. So then other people were like, why is he crying over a chair? Yeah. Where like she was like, okay, there's definitely more going on here than just this chair. Yeah. I would cry over a chair, but not as hard as I did. Yeah. <laughs> Did you find a spot for the chair? I did. It looks fabulous now. <laughs> yeah. We're, you know we're going to need a picture of you in that chair now. There's a picture sure. of me from yesterday in that chair. <laughs> I hate the camera, but I think I can get a few pictures. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you do not hate the camera. <laughs> I think the chair is in a couple of our New Year's Eve pictures. So oh, that's true. We'll make sure to Yeah, excellent. 
So it sounds like being a part, it might not have been something that you wanted to have happen, right? You're like, in fact, when we did the interview before, it was almost like you didn't really want to talk about it because y'all weren't ready to, to face the fact that she was graduating and you would be a part. And then you go through it and Autumn, you learn that you can go and make this huge change on your own and you found marking new friendships and things like that. And you found some ways in which to stay connected, maybe not exactly how it used to be or what you might fully need or want, but it's still something, right? You're still maintaining that friendship. And then like, what are the odds that people would have that chance, right? Like, so you can learn a lot about being apart from each other, but what are the odds that you have that chance of coming back together? Like a lot of times, you know, when I finished graduate school, I was talking about Tara, who lives in Nevada. When we graduated, we knew we would never be in the same spot, right? And so it's like, she's gone for good. I still visit her and we meet at conferences and things like that. But like, what are the odds that you would make it back here? I just, to me, it's amazing. And I think it's interesting that your episode was entitled Home Base, and here you are back home. And I think that is... Plot twist. (laughs) It was. It was the biggest... I I think there are, honestly, when I was in Colorado, I think we were closer than some other times in our relationship when I think for... I would honestly take ownership at yeah. An issue with getting into relationships and not prioritizing my friendships. Yeah. Um, but I think in Colorado, we were closer than yeah. we were during those times, for sure. But we stayed so close. There was no, like, having to get back into it. And I, it was. It was, like, coming home. And it has now actually, like, being back, it has been the same way. Like, once we were... I went home with him for a couple of days before yeah. um, we, like, moved in, moved in. But it has just been... Like, same old, same old. Like, <laughs> Roasting, talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the coffee. assumption of like, what are you doing after work? Nothing, nothing. Just knowing we're gonna hang out. Later. Okay, that means we're hanging out. Like, like it wasn't like, okay, we want to hang out. It's like, okay, I'll see you at your dorm. Okay, yeah, yeah. And like, do you want to go to Robbie? Do you want to go to your like? Do you want to go to my room or do you want to go to your apartment? Like, yeah. and that's we've just like, fallen back into yeah. that so easily. It's almost as if you were never apart. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um. I've never had an issue prioritizing friendships over relationships because I never have relationships. <laughs> I'm still single. So if any of the listeners out here know anyone to set me up with, I'm available. So I got a picture of Marky. Marky's type is basically Marky. <laughs> like, I'm perfect. Physically, as well as personality wise, just listen to this episode, look at a picture. If you know anyone who looks just like Mark, he send them his way. Shameless so, single plug. I was going to say, Best Forevers has now turned into matchmaking. I thought, if anything, I might matchmake friends. I didn't know I'd be matchmaking romantic oh relationships, gosh. but I have a pretty high success rate with matchmaking. So yes, if you know anyone for Marky, please feel free to email me at bestforeverspot at gmail.com. <laughs> Wow, this is the exposure I've been needing. <laughs> Tinder isn't doing it for me anymore. Yeah, and oh now we gosh. have to get on podcast to find partners. <laughs> so uh, what's what's to come? What can we look forward to in Marky and Autumn's friendship? More working collaboratively together. <laughs> Love to provide updates on how that works out and if the people in our office are annoyed. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm interested in that. And I also, like, at first I was kind of joking, but I told him, I was like, maybe we actually should. Because I'm have i supposed to set up, like, one-on-ones with the people I'm working with to get yeah. to know them. And I was like, at first I was kind of joking. I was like, no, maybe we should. Like, yeah. let's talk about, like, what does work working together look like for us? And yeah. we have semi-work together in other settings, but I think in this setting it's, like, even more important that we, mm-hmm. like, really know what to expect from each other. But, I mean, I, I think we will have a really cool opportunity to collaborate in yeah. Leadership Institute, which I'm excited for. So, yeah, there's the next episode, Working Friendship. Yeah. Wow, episode three. I can't wait. <laughs> it's a trilogy. <laughs> yeah, well, and then Marky does graduate in December of this calendar year, so. Yeah, oh, is it nine months from now? An entire pregnancy? It's almost it's 12. About 11, but. What animal has a pregnancy for 11 months? No idea. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I study, we both study communication. I don't think this is our expertise. Yeah, this is not our area Public of expertise. We don't really talk about that, but. I'm sure there's one out there. Yeah. Sure. But I also feel like 
So there is, I think this is really interesting, sort of following a friendship though, right? That that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have you back on because I was like, during the time of doing this podcast, your friendship through went through a major change. And so it's like, let's talk about that. And then it's going to go through another change because you work together as well as being friends. And then it will change again when he graduates because you're likely will still be here for at, another year for, after for graduates. Grad- yeah. So Stay tuned, folks, because the saga of Marky and Autumn is nowhere near being done. Yeah. Nowhere near. It's a roller coaster. Yeah. It's a roller coaster. And I feel like we're always plotting how are we going to like live together again <laughs> or be near each other in the same city. Or... <laughs> if anyone in Mount Pleasant wants to hire me after December, I'm going to be ready to be hired. I'm very, I'm a very good worker. I have a great resume. I'm Marky's, just plugging everything. Yeah. Marky's like, looking yeah. for a job, a partner. A partner. <laughs> Anything else? You have a, you have a house. You have Not a, best, a friend, best friend. So though, the, yeah, those things off. are taken care of. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you coming back on Best Forevers to keep us updated with your friendship. And I sure hope that even though we're joking about it, that you might come back on so we can see sort of the life of our friendship. I think that's really exciting because it started with getting almost run over by a car and now you work together. (laughs) Beautiful. It's it's amazing. You know, there's you can't write this story. (laughs) You really can't. So thanks for coming back on. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Best Forevers. If you like what you hear, be sure to subscribe, rate, review, and of course, share with a friend. Please be sure to follow Best Forevers on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Best Forevers Pod. And I'm at Dr. Lisa Lucas on Twitter. You can always find the podcast webpage for more information at bestforeverspod.com and share your stories of friendship by emailing me at bestforeverspod at gmail.com. And if you'd like to support the movement to love on our friends more, check out the podcast on patreon.com forward slash bestforeverspod. Now friends, check out this recommended podcast that you must get in your ear holes immediately. strong feelings? I sure do. My name is Sarah Walker betcher and I'm here with my best friend, Catella Du. Hey, y'all. We're the hosts of Strong Feelings, a podcast about work, feminism, and friendship. Every week, we talk about the stuff that really matters, like unfucking your work life or taking better care of your brain and body than just swigging wine and smearing on another face mask. Wait, I can still do that sometimes though, right? Totally, but you have to invite me. Okay, deal. We will also be talking about all the ways we're confronting our own bullshit, like how we're unlearning body shame or breaking out of the comfort of white feminism. And you'll hear intimate conversations with authors, artists, activists, and entrepreneurs. We'll ask them why they do what they do and what happens when it gets hard. So check out Strong Feelings, your weekly dose of fun feminist real talk with the best friends you didn't know you were missing. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts or check us out at strongfeelings.co because life's too short to bottle things up.